One of the themes that permeated my Bloodlines 2 videos is an emphasis on respecting fans. Since I rang that bell, I'd be remiss were I not to tell you that I'm fully boycotting Bethesda Softworks for the stunt they pulled on Steam, arguing with Starfield negative reviewers about their own subjective experience. My favorite, and the one you've most likely heard about, is someone complaining that space travel is boring and the planets are barren, only to receive a developer response comparing Starfield to astronauts who landed on the moon. The astronauts weren't bored? In what way is that a reasonable comparison, comparing playing your game to actually landing on the moon? I've been living under a rock when it comes to Starfield, but mostly I've heard it's plain boring. I would have rolled the dice on boring. Hell, I have something of a history with making my own fun and doing so beyond the point of reason. Google my name if you don't believe me, it's kind of what I was known for once upon a time. But the disrespect? I can't brook that at all. Why argue with people about whether they're having fun playing your game? I can't think of anything more disrespectful than that. It got the negative attention it deserved from fans and virtually anyone with a measure of self-respect. IGN? <laughs> Well, you already know. I think the PC Gamer article about Aaron LeBray really opened my eyes to just how low standards are in gaming journalism. And here, IGN did what they do best. Missed the point entirely while simping for a big gaming company. They framed it as Bethesda responding to negative reviews and how this marks a larger trend. Then they got quotes from smaller game developers about how they engage negative reviews to say, let them know they fixed a bug or to clear up flagrant misinformation, but never to argue argue or to disagree, all while completely evading the point that this is the opposite of what Bethesda is doing. I wrote the author myself and asked if he'd even read the reviews, because Bethesda is telling negative reviewers that they're having more fun than they actually are, while IGN tells the world that Bethesda is doing something they aren't and it's completely normal. Are y'all in this together? For fuck's sake. At least the commenters know what's up. As best I can tell, Bethesda just stopped responding this way sometime around the date of IGN. IGN's article, probably because it was working against them. Folks who might not have otherwise negatively reviewed found their resolve in Bethesda's approach, while other folks made sport of ridiculing the developer's canned, repetitive, or flagrantly self-aggrandizing scripts in reply or on social media. Importantly, Bethesda stopped, but they didn't acknowledge it or apologize. That makes it worse, but it matters to me way more than it honestly should, because I've been a fan of Bethesda games since the early aughts, and I feel like they've been unduly trading on their former glory for something like a decade while rolling out the same clunky, broken shit and engaging in the same casual fan exploitation. I'm not alone. Folks go out of their way to give Bethesda the benefit of the doubt. And when they cross a line, well, it's not them. It's Zenimax. Poor Bethesda. Poor Todd. Can't escape or defy their corporate overlords. Well, that argument is off the table, and what we're left with is proof that this is simply who Bethesda is. Any other company would just be grateful that their customers continue to extend undeserved goodwill while giving them the benefit of the doubt. Bethesda has instead decided to test new lows. And why wouldn't they? For the last decade, the reaction has been blow up, buy thing anyway, bomb Metafilter, get excited for next product, buy next product anyway, blow up, negatively review on Steam. At some point, the problem is us. And the answer is, stop buying. And in my case, to stop extending goodwill that hasn't been earned in a long time. The answer is to be done with it. Fuck next product, fuck next hype. That's it, and that's all.